Okay. Oh, no, that, yeah, there we go. Hey, welcome everyone to some Demise Talks Crawl or Demise something. I don't know. There's no really, there's not really a great series that I can fit into this one. Basically, the trunk updates changes are uh, no longer a thing, apparently, because they haven't been doing it for ages. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and say, fuck it, I'm just going to go look at the uh, those trunk changes myself. And I'm going to go ahead and commentate on that. I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. So today we're going to talk about five trunk changes you might have missed and what they mean. And also I've got a couple extra that I wanted to just point out. Um, so this is referring, of course, to the latest version of the game. Is it 0.21 or 0.22? I actually don't remember. It might be 0.22, trunk. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're at that stage now where there's been a lot of changes. Some of these are actually kind of like obvious, but a lot of them are kind of new and they're all different and there's a lot of random shit that you might not notice just playing the game so you know i don't want to have anyone be unpleasantly surprised when these things are a bit different so let's go through them without further ado so the first one we got is the transmitter uh, transmitter one buffs so this one was done only a few days ago but basically it allows all forms to be uh, to now use ones that means that you can use spider form uh ice beast form blade hands all that good shit and you can use your great attack ones and defense ones and digging ones and all that to create uh sorry to play through in the dungeon meaning transmuters got a significant buff in the early game because you no longer have to make that big decision between oh am i going to use a wand or am i going to use my forms or if i want to use the wand, do i have to end the transformation do i walk backwards a bunch until i you know find a way to have the tr transformation timeout without me dying uh, so I can use my attack wand. This is a really nice buff to the transmuter, and it's been a long time coming. It's really annoying to have um, just like the form restrict you from doing shit. It's really weird. It already restricts you in a lot. Of, it restricts your body armor in a lot of ways. So transmutation is always that kind of weird looking thing where you're like, uh, it's good, but it it's very restrictive in in certain ways. And you know, most people just live with the downsides, but now we don't have to anymore because we have all forms being allowed to use one so i just put the comment uh on the page there you can read it yourself i might read the ones that are a little bit more interesting but this one's just very straightforward just all of them can use one now that means spiders can use ones great nice buff to uh the spider after they got nerfed from their movement speed all that time ago now another one that is number 1.5 uh i'm gonna put this under the same comment because it's kind of like related the one mutation buff so that means the the powered by mana mutation, so the ones being powered up by mana, uh, is now a good buff, not a bad buff, and it means that uh, and it still uses the mana when you use your uh, wand to power it up, but you can also still shoot it at zero MP. What that means is basically, it's a slight buff to the mutation buff. Uh, yeah, it's a slight buff to the mutation. It's not a specifically like important buff, but it's just one that you should keep in mind, because now it's not. For a melee character, it doesn't mean anything. Like, it really is a straight buff for that for them. For a mage, though, it's still eh, kind of weird because, you know, it doesn't matter if that's a good or a bad buff. It's kind of like Arc, uh, the Archmage um, uh, positive mutation where, you know, your spells are harder to cast, but they're more powerful. On a mage, sometimes that's really not what you want. That's like the opposite. For example, a summoner. Summoner wouldn't want that at all. One mutation is kind of the same. You still have to pay the mana cost, but now you can use it at zero MP, which makes it a good thing. Uh, and the reasoning for that, it says, is ones of healing, hasting, and teleportation no longer exist. Ones of digging are the only ones that gain no benefit from it, so it's much closer to a mob magic double edge mutation. Yeah, basically, it 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 it's good. It, it's fine. It costs three MP to shoot a wand, like whatever. It's not a huge change. All right, uh, the next one is one that I'm kind of confused about. Uh, so this was done in early. February, but I haven't even had the chance to try it. It's a new amulet, Amulet of the Ac Acrobat. So this one boosts the evade of the wearer by 15 only during move actions. That means resting, moving, and that's it. Um, and I, Maybe blinking, I don't know. Probably not, actually. I think you have to be literally just standing still or moving. Uh, so it's not... Okay, so the amulet has to be worn at full HP, so you can't switch to it. Um, meaning you can't use anything to... T you can't, like, switch to it for a teleportation thing, because that'd be pretty good. Um, there isn't... There doesn't seem to be any real downside. Like, there's no remove penalty. That's fine. 
Um, the boost size is 15 evade, which is not bad, but it's not making you invulnerable while you're standing, so... Eh. Right now, I, I took a look at it with the Wujan game. Note, of course, this does not stack with Wujan. Uh, Wujan's abilities uh, basically cancel the amulet of the Acrobat, so you cannot gain the 15 evade while moving around and doing damage. Uh, it is purely related to defensive moves only, so just like walking and stopping. That's it. So right now, like my hands are actually in the position of the image. Like I'm actually talking with this in my hands. I don't know why I'm like that, but that's the only that's the best way to express how I feel about this amulet. Why does it exist? It it really has no purpose right now of existing, um, except in the very early game. Like it's effectively worthless because you need to be it only works if you're not moving or you're moving and not attacking so it's like why not just have regen regen's just better so yeah i don't really know about this change maybe it's broken i highly doubt it at this point i've learned to judge things for myself and i'm going to trust that i know that this is not a very good amulet so that's what i'm going to say about it so, Amulet Acrobat, that's a new change, you might see it in the thing. It can, it spawns on regular uh, amulets, so don't think it's like a unique amulet, it's just Garbo. Next one is Ozakubo's change. Ozakubo's armor now expires immediately upon movement, granting a level of ponderousness wasn't a very effective downside, and the spell remained extremely widely desirable. Having it break immediately when remote, bleh, having it break immediately when moving lets it remain strong while when cast directly in combat, but completely prevents it from being useful to have an active when out of combat. So, basically, this is a nerf. It's not a change. It's actually a straight nerf. They used to change... Like, Ozakubos used to be um, much easier to use when it didn't, ha didn't have an encumbrance rating. Um, actually, no, it, it always had the encumbrance rating, I think. But back when it didn't have the, the slow thing, and before the time when model dragon armor was a thing, and it was considered light enough to... Uh, well... Nowadays it's called Ass Dragon Armor, but it used to be Model Dragon Armor. But now that that was like not light enough to uh, that was yeah you couldn't cast Ozakubas in it after a while like they nerfed it and then they added the the mutation sorry the ponderousness on top so then the spell got kind of worse and people are still you know, it's okay I guess you can use it if you want it slows you down it's a bit scary now it expires immediately upon movement so what does that mean uh, what 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 is the implication of that well there's a couple of things first of all. If there is no, uh, do you want to move? This will cancel your Ozukubu's uh, armor, like, YN prompt, like a yes-no prompt. This spell is going to be tedious as fuck. So I hope to God that there is actually a prompt for that, because if there is not, this thing is going to suck ass, because tab will just move your ass and you'll just lose the 8, the eight AC whenever you feel. Um, secondly, it's not bad still, it still has the same functionality if you're going to teleport, but it means you can no longer walk away, um, which is, uh, I don't know if I want that. So this spell is just worse than it used to be, there is no, like, benefit to this, you, this is just straight up, like, a nerf, um, because before you could move, now you can't move, it's, it's very simple, like, that's it. The way that I would use this now is just get in a kill hole, use the spell, and then attack, but kind of did that anyway so i don't i don't really know what the change point is someone actually said like oh this makes this spell better i'm like huh it it just adds a condition where it didn't have it before it makes no sense that's not making it better that's just making it worse so ozakubos is worse i don't think it's worthless it's 8 ac is still really good but it's definitely worse than it was right so no, i don't think anyone can deny that it was worse than it was like it's just worse I wouldn't, I wouldn't really pick it up unless I really knew that I wanted to play a scout. Other than that, it's like, why would I bother? Um, I love my movement way too much. Uh, another one that's really great, this one's really good. Uh, this was done last month on the 19th. And this was door changes. So what this means is uh, doors can now push items out of the way. This actually might not be the original like comment now that I'm reading it. Um... Yeah, that, this is just like referencing it. Sorry, because I couldn't find the other door change one, so I just... Yeah. Well, basically put it this way. Now doors will knock shit out of the way, meaning uh, if you have a random bone, a stupid like corpse on the ground on a door, you can now close it and just shoves it out of the way. I mean, I referenced this like a hundred times in, in my channel already, so I'm really glad that this one exists. This is a great change. Uh, I love it. The implications of it 
is that door dancing so closing and closing doors infinitely while another guy on the other side tries to open it infinitely is more abusable but does that mean it really matters mm, not really like it's still good um the only real time i would say that door chain these door changes come into effect is probably in, like it's most common i would say in uh in lair no actually no in vaults vaults tends to be the one with the most doors uh, and you you see this a lot where you just have like a random enemy that can't be butchered uh like sorry sorry random corpse energy uh random corpse rng defines that there is a skeleton on the floor on a door and now you cannot possibly hope to fucking close that door until the skeleton rots and then you pick up all the items that the guy was holding and then you drop it on the ground next to the door and then you close the door and you're like that was a lot of gameplay i had a lot of interactive gameplay there now that's finally gone close the door just throws it out of the way excellent uh there was a small note that says that there is there are a few cases where the doors can still be jammed by corpses i can see that that's perfectly acceptable i actually don't know why that would be the case because you could always just oh god you could always just close the door and have the items drop onto your tile so i'm not really too sure why that would be the case but i'm not exactly sure how the door the corpse or the item distribution happens I, like once you close a door it maybe it like it closes on it, it pushes the thing on the opposite side maybe that's how that works i don't know um but yeah I, I don't know why it couldn't just push it onto you like then you would have no issues right but anyway that's fine um yeah cool next one is spellbook changes so if you didn't see this one uh this is a fairly obvious one it's very very clear uh in the beginning but this is the spellbook change aftermath that i'm talking about so this was done by dozen so if you don't know uh spell books have been changed so that now when you pick them up they disappear and all the spells in that book now go into a library that you can just peruse at any time meaning there's no more layer one stashes there's no more oh shit i gotta drop 10 books oh god i gotta drop all books so basically d um plus enter is no longer a real thing oh sorry d colon enter to drop all your books which is good um, but the aftermath of this is that Trog's burn spellbooks ability is now gone, meaning we do not have access to Conjure Flame anymore. So I just put a couple of random things in the bottom, a couple of enemies in the early game that can really be fucked by burn spellbooks, and these are the spells, these are the guys that we now have to deal with in other ways, which is fine because Trog doesn't have a problem killing these things, just berserk, right? But I'm just trying to point out that those players that enjoy doing this kind of tedious shit will end up not being able to do that and they'll just have to learn how to play berserker like it's supposed to be played being a berserker right um small note about that you now no longer gain piety for those things but since the piety gain from burn spellbooks is actually really low it's something like zero to one i think it's it, it's not a huge deal it's not going to make a big difference to the way that your your spellbooks curve this is purely a quality of life change for spellbooks and i accept that i'm very happy about that but yeah Trog spell bu uh, burn spell books is now gone. Remove conjure flame is now not a berserker ability, which made no sense anyway. So it's good. All right, honorable mention. I don't know why that's in red, but that's cool. Uh, Minotaur, the monster buffs. They wouldn't buff real Minotaur. Uh, so if you didn't know from a age, age, billion years back, uh, Minotaurs became fucking insanely fast and had a hundred MR or some shit like that, some crazy amount of MR um, or sixty. So it was like basically enough that if you were in the labyrinth, get fucked, idiot. Like you can't you can't hex the guy, you can't run away from the guy. He's blocking the go the only way out. So you wouldn't avoid that. Uh, so they reverted that monster minotaur speed. So they're now ten speed like normal. Um, but it says here monster versions of player species are a case where the symmetry should be at least reasonably close. So breaking it substantially by having the monster version be fast isn't a good way of buffing monster minotaurs. Instead, increase their health, defense, and hit dice slightly. Meaning, the already difficult to kill Minotaur, depending on his items, could be even more difficult to kill. My recommendation for you lads and lasses is stay the fuck away from the Labyrinth. Unless you're a strong character. Weak characters will be annihilated by this guy. I'm pretty sure. So, just... I would be very careful of going into Labyrinth. Um, right now, I... Like, the priority for Labyrinth for me is very, very low. Uh, I have a feeling that these these buffs might be a little too much, but I'll have to see. Keep in mind that it says revert Minotaur speed, but not MR. 
the Minotaur still has more MR than usual now, so be aware of that. That's just one thing that I wanted to mention again. Uh, there's a couple more. Kraken fixes. So, uh, add undead Kraken tiles. And then there was just a bunch of random shit about how it was done. But basically, the simulacrum for un for Kraken, which you've seen in Shoals 4, uh, the Kraken simulacra, now have not live tentacles. So in the bottom right, you left, you can see that horrible regular Kraken tile. But in the, uh, that simulacrum, Kraken now has, like, ice tentacles, hopefully. And hopefully undead Krakens also have uh, undead tentacles. I'm not really sure if that's the case, but he says... All of the tiles were generated automatically, and they could definitely be improved. But that is a change that is really good because you know now it shows like an actual kraken that doesn't that doesn't look like it's made out of half human, half alive, half dead shit. So it's good. Nice kraken fixes, and one more, I think, possibly. Honorable mention: RLEC got buffed. This was done um, in in February as well, but. Yeah, so our complaints with the Shock Serpent being too much, too high damage was actually valid. Have Shock Serpent retaliation damage, check our lek. So apparently, whenever we attack the Shock Serpent and it shocks us back, it completely ignored our, uh, our lek. At all. Like, so it just did the entire amount of damage. So our negligent our lek was, like, that got nerfed, keep in mind, was not even a thing against, against the retaliation damage, which is why... You see melee attackers against Shock Serpents get brutally destroyed in several turns. Now, at least, they check Aralek, which is good. Um, I, I just thought this was a funny one. It says, Given that they have always been this way, they may need some further balance adjustments to make them not completely trivialized by Aralek. <sighs> They're going to buff Shock Serpents. Hopefully, that was just a throwaway line, and hopefully that's never going to be acted upon. But this is... <laughs> That's not good, yeah. So, basically, what that means is, uh, you got our if you got our like you you're happy, or now than before. Spark wasps still suck, um, Nicola still sucks, and you know shock serpents are still quite bad. So you know our like isn't amazing, but it still works. It still it is now less bugged than it used to be. All right, that's that's it for today. So thank you guys very much for watching. Um, if you liked the video, leave a like. I will be doing these, if you want, if you guys want, I'll be doing these more often whenever I see some interesting changes. I'll do some discussions. Oh, that picture there is Philia, by the way, from Skullgirls. Um, I've been playing a lot of it, so... I like that wind pose. That's why I picked... That's the only reason why I picked it. I'm like, that's a fucking funny wind pose. Because the guy standing is actually her hair. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. It's, it's just funny. Uh, it's, it's better in motion. But anyway. Um, yeah, so I want to be doing some of these things... Uh, more often, because obviously I was waiting for the original site, uh, the crawl.devels.org to have those like, you know, dev posts, but because the development cycle has gone down so much, and because I feel like, yeah, I feel like they've they've kind of slowed down with their development right now, it's kind of been like, pretty slow, I would say. The last version really wasn't that much different from the other versions, um, it really wasn't, like Null was the only thing that really got added of relevance, and maybe Baraki, but they're not, like, particularly incredible. Uh, but yeah, these these changes, while small, they're actually quite, you know, significant to the game. So I decided to just make my own video, cover it. Uh, and I know where to get comments now from Trunk, so I can just do that whenever I want. I'll probably be doing them about, you know, ir irregularly, but within the two-month period. Every two months at least. Because, you know, I'll just go through all the changes that are interesting. I'll flag them myself. Um... Also, if you watched yesterday's video, I actually said that I really enjoy doing the reviews. This is a little bit of a unrelated topic, so I just want to ask right now. Are there any roguelike games that you guys would like me to play and review? I am willing to do more of these reviews. I had a lot of fun doing the original one with Equin the Lantern. I enjoyed writing the article up, which means that I might have a WordPress soon to just, you know, dump all those reviews and just have like a secondary review platform. Um... I also really wouldn't mind if any devs that are watching, if they are at all, uh, would like to provide me keys with their stuff. Obviously, I'm going to be playing mostly free games. I can't be bothered buying games just to review them because, you know, I can just play Crawl or I can just play Darkest Dungeon. And I won't be reviewing the games I've already played because I feel like that's not fair. I want to have a first impressions of a lot of games. Um, 
I mean, like, I'm not going to be... I'm not, like, asking a dev, oh, give me your game so I can play it. Like, I'm just saying, if, if, if there is a dev out there that is, like, looking for people to review their roguelike or roguelite, I'm more than happy to take that on. I mean, I've been pretty active with the conversation with stuff. I actually have a copy of Tales of Mail, uh, which I have not played before, more than 10 minutes. So I might actually do a quick review of that one uh, as well. I haven't played it before, and it didn't really strike out to me, so I didn't, do, I didn't do a video on the channel. This was like a year ago, at least. Maybe even two years ago. So I might be doing that at some point. Um, Rogue Empire is another one that I have, a, I have a key for. I might do that in a bit. Uh, but generally, yeah, I'm, there's a lot of stuff that I will be uh, wanting to pump out eventually. Darkest Dungeon Sundays will always be there. Don't, don't worry. For, for those five of you guys that love Darkest Dungeon, that will stay. I will not disrupt the schedule for that. Everything else is fine. Uh, I probably will be doing these kind of videos, like more of these videos and more of the other stuff, in between each series of Crawl that I do. Just kind of get more content on the channel. I think I want to start reviewing more content. Uh, sorry, and like reviewing more video, more games and doing other stuff to kind of like give that, that the channel a bit of life. I think that Crawl's kind of been done. Like it's completed. We've beaten the game three times or two times on the channel already. Uh, three if you count like all the random shit that I've done for the tournaments and stuff. Like it's, it's a lot of games that I've got. So moving on to other roguelikes would be interesting just to have some stuff. Oh yeah, that's right. Doom RL. How could I forget, right? For those of you guys that really like Doom RL, I'll be doing that uh, probably this Saturday or Monday for Easter. Um, so look forward to it. Uh, mess like if you if you guys like harass me about it more, I might do more uh, Doom RL. But it looks like people liked it, so yeah. Anyway, that's this blog part of the fucking video done. I just needed to break the twenty minute mark for advertising purposes. Wink. Not really. <laughs> I didn't time that at all. Uh, I actually thought this video was like 40 minutes like usual, but there haven't been a lot of changes, so yeah. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, if you liked the video, like I said, leave a like. And if you have any roguelikes you want to recommend or you want to provide keys for, let me let me know. I'll have a go at them as well. Um, yeah, until then, see you guys tomorrow we'll, where we'll be doing probably another crawl video. Uh, I don't really know what, but it'll be a video, so you'll see. All right, bye. I said bye. You fucker. Oh my god. That's right. I reinstalled OBS and the the record button doesn't work. Let me see if it